What is going on, fish heads? Jen Cravassi at Jekyll Baits, and you guys have repeatedly and repeatedly and repeatedly asked for me to do a 2019 studio walk around. I think we're going to get into that today. And you've also, one of the most frequently messaged questions that I get is, what do I have in the Jeep? And what do I do on a day-to-day -day basis? Because you know I do a lot of bank fishing. I do a lot of kayak fishing. So we'll discuss that real quick. We'll do the outside walk around, the inside walk around, and what I do from day to day. Uh, because some of you are probably wondering. This is the 2017 Jeep Patriot. Pretty much bought it new. I got it gently used. I think it had like 12,000 miles on it. And uh, I love it. And it's easy because I'm, you know, I'm a hobbit for life, so I'm short. It's super easy for me to load a kayak up here. The old Jeep, the last time you guys saw a walk around in any vehicle I had was back in 2016. So it's been way too long. I'm so sorry. Um, but a lot has happened between then and now. Actually, you know, it was probably 2015. I've had this channel since, oh my gosh. 2012 I think the first crusty videos you guys saw was my old former self when I was still uh, playing and performing and touring on stages and stuff like that playing music um, and before I quit my work for the man job which that's a whole nother video but anyways I started the business and moved from Maryland to Arkansas and uh, before I was into this I've always been into fishing you guys know that I used to compete on the weekends, I was one of those Bassmaster Bass Warriors. Did opens, did um, did a club, and uh, I was the only only chick in the club, and it was awesome. I love those guys. So shout out to Crabtown Bassmasters back in Annapolis, Maryland. I love you guys. I miss you. I hope you're having a fantastic, fantastic 2019. But here's the Jeep. Let's let's get down to brass tacks here. Oh, you know, I gotta girl it out a little bit. So we've got the. The southwest look in a black and white because I, even though i have colors I, I like i like the native american uh type of stuff going on here so that's i've got basic seat covers i think i ordered them online at, at amazon always keep a pair of prescription glasses uh, sunglasses in the jeep and the first thing you guys are going to notice that's completely different than what i had going on in the blue liberty um, I've got my rods up. I can carry up to 10 up here. They're well strapped in. And upon saying that, you really need to make sure you know how long your Jeep is or whatever vehicle you're putting your stuff into because you don't want to pull a bill dance and smash it in a door. That's one of the funniest videos. But I carry uh, usually three bait casters and, and two or three uh, finesse rods because you know me, I love my finesse stuff. But that's, you know, basically pretty easy. I've got a couple of hemostats in there. Um, always gum is your friend. But um, hemostats for fish hook removers. That's all I do with them. Promise. I'm not in any of that crazy stuff. Always keep a knife with me. I travel by myself a lot. Um, costas. Prescription costas. And the uh, random. This is from Pole Bender, by the way. Yes, I love it. Thank you for that. Inside. You're probably, it's a bright, bright sunny day today, you guys. So we're probably going to fade a little bit. And I apologize for that. I keep my dogs out here um, when we travel. So the dogs, I like to take them as many places as possible. And there's three of them, a little guy and two biggins. Um, but there's plenty of traveling room for these guys. Uh, I'll usually pile this up so they have this entire area that they can lay on. And the little guy sits shotgun up front so it's clean look at that just has a pillow i think uh keep a change of clothes in here which i do and i think i've got my old tournament jersey in here still this is prior to jekyll bait so my logo my vector is not on it but this is from when i used to this is when i used to compete so good stuff it was my maryland jersey, my last maryland jersey put this back I've got my day bag we're gonna get into that but before we get into that I want to get into what's in the back of this Jeep crows all crows are liars all right 
I always keep a cooler, first and foremost. I don't keep bass, but occasionally I like crappie and walleye and trout. So I keep a cheap, inexpensive cooler that I can just load with ice and fill if I need to. So let's go ahead and move that out of the way and then I'll show you what's in here. Before we get into the meat and potatoes of all the ridiculously, I'm way, it's like kind of like being a hoarder. I was just, I was talking to somebody the other day and I mentioned that I really needed to clean my Jeep and I have, which is why I'm able to comfortably do this video with you guys because it was starting to look like I was a homeless person. I had so many, pla literally like I opened the back of my Jeep up and like plastic spilled out onto the ground. <laughs> so I always keep a life vest in here an extra. I have my, um, my go fast boat. Uh, which, you know, I really don't wear that often anymore just because there have been too many horror stories with it not properly blowing up when you hit the water and uh, that could end badly. So we're going to get into all of this stuff. But first, this is kind of set up the way the water column is set up. I've got top water popper, spooks, um, some just other custom stuff, a couple of jointed swim, blade, uh, swim baits in here. And then I've got your shallow diving cranks. And then I've got a small box of um, mid dot like flukes and stuff like that. Um, a little bit of terminal tackle over here. I've got I've got one box that's like almost all pink, and that was from Extreme Philly Fishing. He was a pink like loved pink, everything pink. So I set up a, a tray, and then I kind of paid homage to him and fished with it one day. So this is like mostly worms and plastics. So I've got some pink tubes in there and stuff like that. And then as we go a little bit further down, I've got some jigs. And then a little bit further, further down, I've got some terminal tackle. And then bottom water column, I've got, this is my blades and spoons. And some, like, shaky head, you know, the big, the big stuff. My arsenal, my terminal tackle arsenal. This little guy over here, you guys need to take a look at this. Let me stop the camera for just a second. So I, um, I prefer whenever possible to use custom guys. Uh, I love to support small business wherever I go, whether that's um, farm to table. And that's my neighbor and his Harley, which is, it's a pretty badass Harley, um, but it's cool. I live in a pretty neat neighborhood. It is pretty out here, but uh, that's them. Anyways. I've got two plastics guys in Pennsylvania that I love to deal with. One is Shane Schweitzer, and I've been I've been getting his stuff for quite some time. And on the East Coast, these are the Medusa heads, and very finessey. Uh, he's got it on these white and dark. I mean, I'd hit that. That's totally cool. But these are all custom. They got the sickle hooks on there, super sharp. I think he uses VMCs. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure he does. And then he's got the weight. These are eighth ounce. These are great for slow drag. And then you know me, I love finesse. So, and then I got them from him in like a more of a watermelony type deal with green heads. And he does all the the jig heads himself. Um, pours everything out and then adds the the hooks to them. And these are more like the little beaver tails, but with those killer killer Medusa heads, they really come to life in the water. Also. Recently, so last year I went home to Maryland and spent some time with my family and I ran into uh, PA kayak bass fishing and he was in the middle of a tournament and he happens to uh, be a big proponent of this guy. Undercover Baits is out of Pennsylvania, that's a Pennsylvania area code, look them up on Facebook, but this is some of the juiciest tubes I've ever seen. Load of assault, it's got a super great scent of it. and. Uh, money these things are money so i'm just going to show you a couple of the colors this is the grasshopper tube this is that fall crawl fall crawl color this is money in arkansas here actually all of these are you just slow drag he's he's calling this one the judge but this is set up kind of like a, a pbj color it's loaded with that purple flake look at these helger mites you guys and I've caught on these. I've caught smallmouth already on this. This is the only one I've had a chance to use. But summer's coming. It'll be slow river tube dragon time. Black blue. This is called apple pie. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Go check him out. Go check out Undercover. And check out my boy Shane Schweitzer at Outcast Baits as well. 
two fantastic guys out of Pennsylvania, our founding state, founding fathers. Good stuff, good stuff. Now, you guys get to see all this craziness. Look at, look at the action on that. Just, I mean, just, just sitting there. Okay, so what's tied on to this? This is a Cactus Wren. That's the other company that I like to use uh, on the, on the, I wouldn't say West Coast, but um, they're in the Southwest area. Um, and and uh, I've been dealing with them for many, many years, and I love their products as well. So, again, a uh, big proponent of custom folks whenever I can be. But I keep a, a couple of finesse jig type deals. This, let's see if I can show you a couple of really cool things here. Yeah, we'll show you this. Paul Stiles, um, a, f a guy that I've become acquainted with through the years. He's down in Texas. He used to work for Zoom in WEC. Was one of the founding guys that worked. He didn't found the company. Um, as a matter of fact, the uh, the owner has recently passed away within the last year. But uh, makes some just phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. So I've got some powder painted jig heads, shaky heads. From, and look at how sharp that is. I mean, you can just tell by looking at it. So that's from him. I always keep a couple of those boxes in here. I've got some chatterbaits. I do a lot of chatterbait fishing in the spring. But as we go through here, I keep line. This is extra braid, extra fluorocarbon extra mono it's got everything that i could possibly need in it um, when i'm on the road and traveling it's just got a few in it right now um, i need to replenish that at some point looks like it's kind of got stuck in it too um, but everything from flipping and pitching to and then behind that i've got some yamamoto senkos you guys know what that looks like so i don't have to spend a whole bunch of time on these random some kai tat stuff more jackal i love jackal products even though i'm jackal it's not the same i know but i still i do like like their frogs very much and some random plastic packs say that five times fast whiskey river another small company that has really really good sinkos and then i was talking <laughs> just talking about this in the last video i'm pretty sure um I, i've always loved the robo worms obviously you can see i've done a lot of fishing with them um I, I'm probably going to end up doing a massive giveaway on my 500th video, which is 100 from now. I'm just approaching 400 videos, but stay tuned for that because there's just so much stuff out here that I have used that, um, and it's not gimmicky, folks. I, I'm, I'm going to give you a, a preemptive strike here because I know you guys are thinking, oh, YouTube, she's a YouTuber, she's going to be a YouTube proponent, and I am, but... Guggen baits are not gimmicky. They work, folks. Go check them out. Go check them out. This is one of my favorites. One of my absolute favorites. Check this guy out. Donald David has been tying jigs for almost 30 years. He's an upstate New York guy, and I'm, I'm going to have to pull one of these out so that you can see the detail he puts in. Now, this is, uh, this is deer. This is buck and squirrel on this one. Actually, this might be a bunny. This is buck and bunny. I'm sorry. It's bunny strip. He does squirrel as well. But this is a, a bunny buck strip. All different colors. Does not use glue. Does not use glue on his collars. Let's see if we can get a better close-up of that. The work is impeccable. And he hand pours the jig heads as well. I think he uses Gamagatsu's, Trocar's, VMC's, Eagle's pretty sure that's his forte. I think his stock or eagle claws were just gorgeous work. And they and they're money. They're absolute money. Does I don't care what state you're fishing in, where you're at, country or in the world. Don stuff second to none. Love you Don. Had to give you that prop. I've got tackle trays up here. Mostly my custom stuff. This is uh something I'm going to be using here shortly. It's a longer jerk bait. It's a floater, but we have tiger muskie in the Spring River. 
I've, I know that they've been caught. There have been some huge ones caught out of the spring. I think they're probably a little harder to, to fetch these days. But my goal this year is to, to catch one. So that's what I'm hoping to do. Hey, my mailman just showed up and just wanted to let you know if you guys are fish heads in the state of Arkansas and you're going to be buying anything from Jekyll Bates August 3rd and 4th, I won't charge you tax. And then as we go back down on these, and I'm not going to spend a ton, ton, ton of time because it's all plastic. So you guys know what plastics are. Um, I keep them sorted by, I don't know why Havoc is my bag of chips, but it just happens to be in the plastic bag that it's in right now. I try and keep them sorted out by brand. These are all big baits or big bites, Havocs. But again, I, I just, I'm not using them these days, folks, because I have complete confidence in another bait. So, and then last but not least in the bottom, I keep the, I keep wrenches, screwdrivers, things that I might need to help on the road with stuff. Obviously I've got my spare tire and all that in here. Um, my go fast boat stuff, which you know what? I don't use this as much as I do anymore. I keep it for occasions, uh, tournaments and things like that. But I really don't, uh, I tell you, I've just heard too many horror stories where the, where the auto inflate doesn't auto inflate when you hit that water. So keep this too. This is always a good idea to have in the vehicle. You're probably going to see something happen with this in the next few months or so with me. We just, just got to figure it out. Just got to figure it out. And uh, I do keep an alarm system in the Jeep, so don't get crazy. Don't think about it. This is my day pack. Um, I keep it fairly simple in the day pack. I keep two bags of plastics. Um, actually, three, because I have a bulk bag in here from, uh, from Thayer. That's natural dragon drops, some bandito bugs in a couple of different colors, and some natural slim shakes. I've got some new stuff coming. Oh, I've got, uh, looks like I've got some watermelon in here as well. But I do have some new stuff coming. Should be here today, hopefully. Um, that I that I ordered, uh, obviously, I, I I blew it up on that morning dawn drag and drop. So I, I ordered some more. This is my tackle tray. I keep one hard tackle tray in here and I keep one jig tackle tray. Let's take a look at this. I might say that this is hodgepodge, but it really isn't. It's a day pack. So this is everything that I could possibly need, probably more than I would ever fish in one day. I've got everything from some little finesse catch co type stuff. Um, some of my custom repaints. This is the, that Rapala wake bait that I love to use. I love that purple. So this is one of my patterns right there. Um, I just did a spray session. We're going to finish that spray session up. This is that um, that basic primary starter kit color. So I did that yellow perch. And I uh, love how it turned out. I'm going to fish it. And then uh, it's a brown trout that I've done. I've got some other, I've got some darters in there. And again, most of these are mine. I do see a Michael Ornstein in here. That's beautiful. That's money right there. That is a phenomenal bait. So shout out to you, brother. Uh, Tennessee darter. I did another one for Wyatt. Go check that video out. This is a uh, little whopper plopper that I painted in the 90. And this is a rainbow trout, obviously, because that works really well in some of the rivers that I fish. Some more Don David jigs. And then this I just got from my buddy Pete Carter over at Reckless Rodents in the San Diego area. I can't wait to throw this. I love these. Now this is a little bit deeper diving. I've got a bunch of the 62.5 A's in stock right now that I do. This is the 62.5 B, so this is just a wee bit deeper. This will get you in that 10, 11 foot range that I love, especially when I'm throwing against bluff walls in uh, like the Bull Shoals, Norfolk area. So yeah, I do. I do fish my own hard stuff. I just don't always have a chance to do it. Most of the time with my hard baits, what I'll end up doing is I'll take it off to my local lake, I'll float it, I'll, I'll swim it, I'll see what it looks like, and then my pro staff gets it and they fish it and do whatever they do in their tournaments with it. They, most of them do pretty well with them, um, most of them. So that's the hard tackle. I'll set that off to the side. I'll re repack that. Let's see. 
here is a jig box. And it ranges in size from quarter ounce finesse type deal all the way up to an ounce. And I've got a couple of tubes in here as well. But just a variety of colors, pretty much any condition that I might be fishing for that day, and uh, various color combinations, various weights. A couple of chatter baits in here, and then a couple of skirts. Got skirts in here as well. So that is my jig and tube, and got some Senkos in here, which I'm not sure why. Maybe for Ned's or Shaky Head. So that's that. And then, obviously, you guys have seen these. And then I do keep a backup bag of Biospawn. And Biospawn is pretty decent, too. Um, I do love their uh, plasma tails. I haven't used their vial bugs yet, but I'm going to. And this is the point in the video where I have to give a shout out to Tackle Junkie. Um, I was watching one of his live streams one day and I happened to grab some Biospawns from him. So, Jim, thank you so much for this stuff. Really enjoy it. Um, I've been using, as a matter of fact, I caught a big smallmouth on one of these, uh, this particular one the other day so if you guys don't know who tackle junkie is you're missing out he's everything tackle um, he's also in the illinois area so go check him out he's a mystery tackle box guy and um man what a wealth of knowledge there so go check out tackle junkie and again jim thank you so much for the bio spawns i love it of course last but certainly not least is the front pouches and the sides I've got a stringer i keep here for panfish and for trout uh, walleye on occasion, but usually walleye will go directly in the cooler and I'll, I'll gill cut them uh, just so the, the meat stays fresher. I do have a digital scale and the kind, gentle way, not the meat hook, but the uh, kind, and I zero out the, the scale before I, you know, after I put this on so that it's an accurate weight. So I do keep a scale in at all times, although I've been doing the, uh, the inches lately. That's my tournament board for kayaking. And there's probably radio pair flip-flops in there as well. But last but not least, um, I've got some terminal tackle in here. I've got wacky rig type deal. I've got my scissors. You always have to keep scissors. And then the terminal tackle, a little tiny bag. It's got the basics. So if we take a look at those, I've got bullet weights, I've got drop shot weights, I've got uh, tube jig heads, finesse and worm hooks, and then my archie jig heads, and my little nail cutters. And that pretty much concludes what's in my Jeep. Um, obviously I've got buffs and stuff up front, a um, couple of chargers, and that's it. So we're going to check out the studio. Uh, this has probably run longer than we thought it was going to run, so I may do the studio on a completely separate video.